Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for Boxing News and Views from around the internet. It almost went horribly wrong for the Romanian prospect Mihai Nistor, who owns a win over Anthony Joshua from the amateurs. He was involved in a slugfest on a Golden Boy card headlined by Zerto Ramirez. He was facing Colby Madison. So this was all over in a couple of rounds, but there was four ruled knockdowns and two of them to Nistor. So um, a, a knockdown apiece in each of both rounds, but Nistor going on to get the stoppage in round two. So so I'll quickly sort of cover the action because it was a case of Nestor pretty much getting caught with most of everything that Madison was throwing at him. Nestor, the shorter man here, so six foot, uh, Colby Madison, a few inches taller, longer man. He was uh, early on trying to sort of box and move. Nestor just tracking forward next to no head movement. Madison having success and sort of clipping him early and often Nestor trying to walk through the punches get up on uh, Madison's chest and just sort of throw his shots and you know get that work to body and head away and actually Madison was the first to go down and he tried to claim that there was some sort of clash of heads it takes a knee the ref isn't having it and gives him a count so um, the replay showed there wasn't really anything that sort of landed in terms of a punch but you know they were sort of uh, locked you know sort of horns almost together and that's what Madison was saying hey you know our heads came together give an account towards the end of the round Nestor walks onto a shot sort of careens into the ropes probably could have and should have been ruled a knockdown there he was clearly still a little bit buzzed and they just start trading because the referee says you know continue and Madison catches him with a right hand Nestor goes down for the first time in his pro career albeit a short pro career so far this was his third pro fight uh, so Nistor looked shaken up. It was a good shot. And again, it was a case of almost next to no defense. And uh, we saw the same again in the second round. So Nistor caught with a big counter right hand. And he goes down quite heavy. He beats the count comfortably enough. But you're sort of thinking, is an upset here on the cards? But during the fight, there was those moments where Madison, sort of like with that sort of head clash knockdown, which he was complaining about, complaining about some other stuff. And you sort of thought if the going gets tough, he might, you know, not be able to pull through with this. But he was certainly willing to trade with Nistor. But then he gets caught with a big overhand left um, as Nistor, you know, moments after he gets knocked down, catches him with an overhand left and sort of, uh, sort of backed up and goes down. Referee doesn't like what he sees, and it's waved off. So Nistor gets the win. Madison, um, you know, clearly from the referee's perspective, was unable to continue. Although I didn't think he looked terribly hurt. Maybe it was a little bit, you know, dramatic and the sort of delayed reaction of going down. But for parts of this fight, he seemed to want it, seemed to be up for it. But then in other parts, he's sort of, you know, looking for a way out and complaining and not liking what he, sort of some of the treatment that was being meted out to him. But anyway, this ends in a second round stoppage for Mihai Nistor, who advances to 3-0. But some concerns, obviously, because this level of competition, you know, he was getting touched up, basically caught with most of everything that was thrown at him in round one and round two, walking onto sh being walked onto shots, clipped with jabs, hooks, you, you name it. He wanted to get up on Madison's chest. He was able to get there for about half the fight and unload that sort of stuff. But going forward... You know, you've got to question where Mihai Nistor's level is. It's one thing in the amateurs over three rounds, being able to absorb some punishment and get away your own, that sort of thing. A point system, you know, you're strategizing over three rounds, outwork your opponent or land the more sort of telling blows, etc. But in the pros, if you're just going to walk forward and take punishment, almost next to no head movement, next to no defense, and you're getting dropped twice, legitimate knockdowns, by a guy who really is a journeyman, maybe slightly higher level than some of the other lower level journeymen, but he's not a journeyman of huge repute, but clearly Madison could fight, but he's a certain level. So it's a red flag that Mihai Nistor is taking this sort of punishment, getting dropped by a guy 38 years old, Colby Madison. 
yeah, so I mean, you have to question where is Mihai Nistel sailing? And you know, maybe this is a case that he was a good amateur, but maybe his style, his lack of sort of size, um, lack of defense is probably going to play against him in the pros. They did make a, a comment because um, Nistel clearly was a bit trimmer than some of his um, more recent fights. And when I say recent fights, back to his earlier pro career, first fight in 18 months here. He was uh, over, you know, way heavier than he needed to be for his first couple of fights. He was up in the 240s. He was 223 pounds for this fight. They said that uh, training with Joel Diaz out in the desert had lost 40 pounds in the last three months. Maybe you can question if his uh, punch resistance had been affected. But, you know, I sort of think there are red flags with that defense. I mean, losing the weight didn't mean that he couldn't move his head or didn't have any defense or anything like that that's just a case of he needs to tighten that stuff up because at a higher level and not much more higher you know if he goes a little bit higher he's going to get found out he's going to get hit by someone who can make him stay hit make him stay down and um, stop him so yeah I'm you know sort of just tempering my expectations with Mihai Nistor but in saying that obviously there was that weight loss, but there's been the inactivity. And he almost could have been a, one of these sort of heavyweights that's sort of fallen to the pandemic curse of this inactivity, going in there, putting up, sort of laying an egg and putting in a bad performance, because he didn't look great in there for me. It was an entertaining fight. It was a fun fight. And I, ex I can expect going forward, we'll see similar sort of sort of performances where he's the guy, it's the smaller heavyweight. He's got to sort of force the action, try to get to the inside. He'll make it exciting. But his head movement and just general level of defense, it can't be as bad as it was tonight because he will get stopped and stopped badly. As it was, those were clean knockdowns and uh, yeah, he looked shaken up. So uh, yeah, tempering expectations with Mihai Nisto. I just hope that they can actually get him back in the ring here um, you know, in the next few months because clearly he needs uh, to shake off a little bit of rust. But uh, yeah, he needs to advance his career at 30 years old. They probably want to sort of build him through some requisite fights um, and sort of see where they can take him. But um, yeah, a couple of red flags here with Nistor. If you saw that fight, what did you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.